Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine game series and our Human game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and welcome to the second of our videos on Leela with WDL Contempt. Leela's uh, opening uh, ideas in the advanced Karakhan. And uh, well, we saw the stunning idea Queen H5 in a previous video. And we saw that I tried to play uh, concretely but sensibly. Well, here I tried to play um, uh, the most aggressive uh, continuation, uh, the most challenging continuation, and we'll see how that turned out for me. So um, just to show the opening moves again, d4, d5, d takes c5, main line, and now Leela's incredible idea, queen h5. So what I did in, uh, here was to play the move bishop c5, and the idea was after knight f3, was to play queen b6 as quickly as possible. And I'm just hitting that uh, pawn in f2. And, uh, well, the idea is to uh, to try and, um, um, well, force back white's pieces. Um, in actual fact, you know, when you give this to Komodo, uh, Dragon, or Stockfish, they both play the move bishop d3. And after queen b6, they want to play either queen e2 or they want to play knight h3. However, Leela and... Uh, I, I, I sort of had an inkling that this was going to happen, but uh, my heart still sank a little bit when uh, when it was played. After queen b6, what does Leela want? Ah, bishop d3. There we are. You want the f2 pawn? Take the f2 pawn. Open up the old f file for me, and uh, we'll pile on on the f7 pawn. Um, I do have to say that um, my you know my intu intuitive uh, reaction to this sort of thing happening is, oh God, you know, I must be just going to lose this, aren't I? But um, I did manage to uh, to pull myself together and um, and uh, you know try and uh, and and work things out. I mean, um, um, you know, a lot of experience of working with engines. You know that the engines uh, would find some sort of way of uh, defending this properly. So okay, you know, just got to try and uh, think like that and, and and work your way through. I mean, the key thing is is that you know if we give White too much time, then you know White's doing great, right? I mean, uh, this Queen on H5 is in a really great attacking position already f file opened uh, as we said you know the knight's coming in there's all possibilities to attack the queen the bishop can come out can go really really fast so i really felt that i needed to um start counter-attacking straight away and um well you know the uh, the most obvious thing to counter-attack was the pawn on e5 so i thought well let's start with that one then so I played the move g6, and the idea was, um, you know, the bishop's covering h4 for the moment. So, you know, if I do it now, then the um, um, the white queen, you know, has got a, a slightly more restricted uh, uh, range of squares to go to. And uh, Leela put it on h3, and uh, I think again, if you look at the uh, the associated PGN, you'll see that uh, um, both Komodo and um, Stockfish wanted queen g4, but queen h3 looked much more dangerous to uh, to me, I have to say. So I played the move knight c6, and after knight c3, um, with a little threat maybe of knight a4 or even knight b5, I played the very concrete move bishop d4. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm simply going after this e5 pawn. Um, that's all that I'm doing. And um, uh, really trying to, um, well, inhibit white's development, force white maybe to put, you know, pieces on squares he doesn't want to. Now, um... Leela played uh, knight b5, and this was actually all part of the plan. Um, um, I wasn't going to take on e5, that looked way too risky, but what I wanted to do was play the move bishop c5. And uh, my feeling was, was that, you know, whenever white goes knight d6, and it might be after I force white to play, um, uh, to play uh, uh, knight d6 with a6, I can just take, take, and I can play e5, and then I'm going to follow up with e4 afterwards. Or, you know, something like bishop e6, castle, queen side. So I felt actually that this was, um, this was not bad at all. That's why I felt that I could, I could afford this move, bishop d4, and then back to c5 afterwards. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't really sure. I wasn't really sure what white was going to do, but Leela just kept on making it wilder. Played the move a4. A4, right. So I played a6 to chase away the knight. Um, and Leela played a5. And I was thinking, hmm, a5. What's the, what's the point of that? The, the idea is that after knight, I think the point is that after knight a5, 
Well, we've got a couple of points, actually. It might be that Leela was a- intending to play b4 straight away and then bishop e3. When If I go bishop c5, there's knight d6 check. So it might be that Leela was looking at that. Um, I also thought maybe that bishop d2 was the idea. Uh, because if you go knight c6, well, the a file's been opened. Um, I mentioned this in the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, you know, um, uh, a couple of very nice Alpha Zero games uh, in there. But the idea of giving away pawns in front of your rooks and then they become developed. And here, you know, hey, presto, the A pawn's been uh, given away. The rooks developed all of a sudden. So A takes B5 is impossible. And um, if after Bishop D2 you go A takes B5, I could go B4 here, you know. And uh, this again looks looks quite awkward for uh, for black. So, yeah, I decided that um, I would have to roll with the punches and go queen d8. White goes um, bishop g5, and now I go queen d7. So, yeah, my queen's being hit around, but okay, you know, the, the knight's uh, still in trouble there. So um, the knight goes back to c3. Knight a4 is a little bit irritating, and that's why I played the move queen c7. And I, I thought... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not super comfortable. Uh, I'm not, of course, but um, I did think that I that I that I was sort of doing okay here. I mean, I'm uh, attacking this pawn on e5, and um, yeah, you know, I mean, White's got to deal with that somehow, and otherwise I can get some uh, some pieces developed. I'll probably maybe go bishop e7 at some stage, threaten the exchange of bishops as well. You know, I don't know. I, I thought that I was uh, I had some chances here, but. Um, Leela just played rook f1 and just sacrificed the e-pawn. Um, and, um, well, yeah, what can I say? I mean, um, I couldn't see a way to consolidate, so I think I've, I've got to grab that pawn. And now I wasn't quite sure what Leela was going to do, but knight a4. I mean, I have to say that when I was playing this with black, I had the feeling that I was getting just, you know, hit from either side. You know, I was sort of, what's going on over there? Boom, you know, getting hit there. Um, so... Um, for all that, I didn't think that I was doing uh, too badly here. Um, yeah, I mean, I was expecting um, actually uh, the move um, maybe bishop f4. Um, but after knight a4, I played uh, bishop e7. And now what I was hoping for was the move bishop f4 because I've calculated this line. Haha, -ha, bishop d6, queen g3 looks like a, a very unpleasant pin. But then I can take on d3. Bishop d6, queen c2, check. And after knight d2, I go bishop d7, which I thought was decent for me, because if queen d3, I've got bishop b5. Ha 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 ha. So that was quite nice. But Leela played the move queen g3, and here I probably... Well, I think this is really where I started to go wrong. Um, I should probably go bishop d6, but I was a bit worried about queen h4, and I sort of felt like I'd given Leela... Um, yeah, just given Leela, the, you know, um, some uh, um, uh, an extra tempo to make the queen better. And I wasn't 100 percent sure what, what, what my next move was going to be particularly. You know, it was uh, was one of those dilemmas. But what I did was much worse. Unfortunately, I played bishop g5, knight g5 and f6. It's suddenly around here that I, I started to realize, oh, my goodness, I could get hit by another another side because um, after knight b6, Rook b8. I suddenly started getting worried about rook a3, with the idea of um, of rook c3. But um, yeah, no, Leela didn't. Um, Leela didn't do that to me. Um, Leela just played the move uh, um, rook e1. So just uh, lining up on here. So um, I played uh, queen d6 here to um, uh, actually with the idea of playing knight f7 which I thought was uh, quite cunning but Leela just played king d1 so we've had king e2 back to d1 now um, and uh, this is rather irritating it must be said because um, if I go um, knight f7 in this position um, white goes knight takes e6 and this is rather rather bad for me so uh, if I go bishop e6 for example there's queen d6 and rook takes e6 check and uh, just winning a piece basically so that is rather grim um, so I played the move king e7 and then Leela just um, <laughs> played in very relaxed fashion with rook e2 actually just um, yeah you're just aiming to go here and then <laughs> take this one and the really unpleasant point is that um, you know at the moment uh, if you were to play uh, rook takes e5 I've calculated that one then I just take 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 Rook f7 check and um, 
uh, well, I can do all sorts of things, but maybe King E8, for example, and uh, I should be fine there. It's not doesn't look very pleasant, but uh, I'm all right. But um, if I uh, try and develop now with Bishop D7 um, after King E7, then Leela can take on E5 because if Queen E5 takes takes, there is Rook F7, and then this one is hanging. That's very unpleasant. So, you know, I, I was just sort of looking and thinking, I don't actually know what I can do in this position. I've just got no move that I particularly want to play. So um, I played knight h6, um, but then Leela uh, played the unpleasant move queen h4 here. Um, so, yeah, lining up there. Um, so I played knight f5, uh, but after takes takes, knight takes h7, I, uh, I I've seen enough. Um, yeah, you're threatening on f6, you're threatening f5, I'm completely tied up, whatever's, uh, whatever's happening, so uh, I'm just going to lose lots of material. In fact, uh, Leela thought the best line was rook takes h7, but uh, takes and then something like queen f5 or something, I'm just losing lots of material in the end. So I resigned. Um, very interesting game, a eh? really interesting game. But um, what really surprised me was that, um, you know, none of the other engines uh, sacrificed the pawn in this way. And, yeah, you know, I mean, presumably they feel that they, um, you know, that uh, um, maybe it's, you know, around the same evaluation as, um, as not giving up the pawn. So they just, uh, you know, prefer that one. But in terms of human difficulty and, uh, you know, this one is just on another scale. And, um, well, I mean, you can just be inspired by the way that Leela played it. Just uh, giving away pawns left, right and centre. And, uh, you know, every time a, a pawn is sacrificed, there's more activity for the pieces. And every time a pawn is advanced, there somehow seems to be more space, more scope for Leela's pieces, you know. This pawn has moved all the way to a5 with tempo, uh, was looking to activate this rook, doesn't work, but now the knight's got this a4 square to come into b6 and attack the bishop on c5. Really incredible. And every time I attacked a pawn, Leela just ignored it and just, uh, you know, went for the open lines. And, uh, well, I didn't do so badly for a little while, but, um, yeah, you know, in the end I just sort of uh, collapsed. It's just, uh, it's too much simply, uh, you know, it's too much to deal with. So there we are. That was the five queen h5 idea against the uh, the main line of the um, the Henkin Arkel system in the in the Karakhan uh, advance, which, to be honest, is now the uh, you know the uh, um, the main line that gets recommended in in all the books. So uh, you know this could be really really valuable for you. And uh, you know for once, haven't played g4. So uh, that uh, just shows that uh, Leela with contempt is a bit more versatile than playing g4 in every single position. But there we are, you know, I hope you enjoyed that. If you like the video, give a like, subscribe, tell your friends, take a look at my new book, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, I've mentioned uh, a few times in these videos, and, um, and also re-engineering the chess classics. If you're keen on classic games, you want to know what the engines think about them, then uh, do take a look. There's some well-known games and also some absolute stunners that are completely unknown and, uh, well, where the engines find incredible things. And uh, yeah, you know, otherwise, um, hope you're enjoying the series still. Um, I've got uh, quite a few more openings to come. Lots of different little experiments also that have been suggested in the um, in the chat to the videos. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm planning to, to keep going with this for um, for for a little while yet. So um, hope it's enjoyable and hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching.